My parents took me to my first heart football game. My mom said I was uh, be two and a half months old. Um, I don't think I've ever missed a season. So I've gone through four or five coaches. I've lost count at this point, but um, and Hart's one of five schools I've never made the playoffs. When I came into my freshman year, I went through three different head coaches for football, for varsity. Why, why has Hart kind of traditionally lacked the success uh, in the football program? So I think that's a great question. Um, not an easy question either. Hart, Michigan, the close-knit community an hour and a half north of Grand Rapids, has built a reputation for itself. But this reputation is one they would rather not claim. The Pirates are one of five teams to never qualify for the Michigan High School Football State Playoffs. And their story is far from simple. For me as a, an alum, but somebody, you know, this place is pretty special to me. It's not just a school. And when you watch a program that you really, really love, uh, not be successful. Um, you struggle with it. With constant turnover in school administration and the athletic department, it was hard for Hart to find a coach who would stick it out for the long run. Their team has struggled since its origin because of this, having a historic winning percentage under 400, and more than seven coaches just since the turn of the century. They have even failed to field a team some years. Despite these clear struggles, we can look deeper. Why would no coach stick it out here? The answer is actually pretty simple. It's the West Michigan Conference. Since the founding of the West Michigan Conference in 1932, it has dominated. Unfortunately, it has been at the expense of the Pirates. Conference members like Ravenna, Montague, and Oak Ridge have 10 combined state titles in their trophy cases. The likes of Hall of Fame coaches like Dusty Fairfield, Jack Sugars, and Pat Collins have given these schools a leg up in creating dominant programs. As these programs held steady, the Pirates continued in the opposite direction. Coaches hesitated to take the hard job because competition was so fierce and they were quick to leave when their fears were validated. But this all changed in 2013 when Mark Platt came to town. He urged the community to stop pointing fingers. No more excuses. The new superintendent certainly didn't hide how he felt. You know, I'm gonna be straight up. I believe Hart can win. But Hart cannot win and will not win if it continues to do what it always has done. When people say, well, my kid has to work, he can't make the weight room. That's an excuse. The truth of the matter is, kids work in every district. That's not unique to heart. The difference is, in the place where they win, they do both kind of gave you that that belief early on that we that that heart could win so it's, it's kind of simple there was nothing in the water at Oak Ridge the, the the thing that they had was they believed in themselves and they really believed there was never a game where they stepped onto the field and thought that they couldn't win they stepped on the field every game believing they were going to win and frankly, it was a mind shift issue here and we needed to stop thinking that we couldn't win. Um, there was a lot of that. You could see it in the body language on the kids on the field. You could see it in the coaches uh, on the sidelines. If they got down, they were down. I mean, it, it was over. All you had to do was score the first one or two touchdowns of the game and our, our kids were hanging their heads. With Mark Platt's hire and call to action, the culture around Hart's football program began to shift. 
even a 9-0 season on the JV level, but the varsity program was still lacking success. This all changed in 2021, though, when Hart may have made the most important decision in the history of its program. So, zoom forward to 2021. Um, you hire coach Joe Tannis. Um, you know, I think you, you, you could look at a record. Uh, you know, you talk to coach Tannis himself and he would tell you this, you know, his last head coaching job did not go how he wanted it to, right? Um, what made you still believe in him? What, what he could do? So it, it takes time to build a quality program. And um, I'm a graduate of that place where he was last. Um, and if you watch the season after he left, they went nine and oh. Uh, he had done all the right work. They just didn't stick with it long enough to see it. I, I mean, he was taking them there. Um, they didn't go nine and oh on accident, and they certainly didn't go nine and oh because of the guy that's followed him. Nothing against that guy, but take a look what happened the next two seasons afterwards. Okay, like was there even a team last year? So, <laughs> you know, my, my point is pretty simple. What, what I saw was a guy that took a program that traditionally is not very good, and he turned it into a program that was winning. And then sure enough, there they go, they went 9-0. Um, they quit. So the very thing that you don't want kids to do a district did and uh, I, I, I was happy to take them. <laughs> yeah uh, my time at Orchard View was uh, one of the best times of my life and one of the hardest at the same time. Um, you know I went there you want to be a head coach young I wanted to be a head coach before I was 30 years old that was kind of one of my goals got it at 29 I uh, wanted to kind of check that off so I could say I did it uh, then you kind of quickly find out that that doesn't mean anything, um, saying you made it at that time. So uh, then the work started, um, and it was a great experience. It was probably the most difficult thing I ever did, um, the most difficult time of my life, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, it challenged me who I was as a man, made me really kind of dig deep. So it was a great community, loved the community. So I have a lot of great memories from it. I built a lot of great relationships with a lot of my players um, and community members and people in the school. Um, but it, it was hard work. It was, uh, you know, we were right in Muskegon County, surrounded by a bunch of the best schools. And uh, it was not easy, uh, you know, trying to flip that program. With Platt's confidence in Tannis' ability and Tannis' lessons learned at Orchard View, Hart football seemed like it might just be the perfect option for both. Uh, living in Muskegon for almost 10 years, um, you know, I barely knew where Hart was, um, you know, um, so I, I really did not think I was ever going to move up this way, uh, away from the Grand Rapids, Muskegon area. But the Ravana AD, um, who uh, is one of my good friends, coached with me at Orchard View, is an Orchard View alum, uh, he, uh, he ended up telling me you should really look into Hart. And uh, he's like, there's a lot of good people. I think you would really like it. And then I started doing some research and looking at it. Um, and then I just decided that I was gonna go for it. With Tannis' hire, he began to build. And the tide started to turn. It was very clear to the community, players, and staff. He was not just any old coach. We've seen it in the past where we've had coaches that just came because they wanted the position. They wanted he wants something to do. Um, he came because he wanted to make it better. And it was pretty obvious to us, um, not only as helping with coaches, but also helping in the, this is the community. Um, now, since Tana showed up, he, I was a little lenient at first. I didn't want to fully commit to it because bad timing in the past. But um, seeing him work with people, the coaching, working as a team, it, it really opens up a lot of people from trust. Um, I like it. I feel like I could trust him with anything. He came in the off season and held a bunch of practices. Well, it didn't start off too good like how it is right now. Yeah, there was there was about six kids committed during the off season, and Coach Tannis turned it around. More of a family aspect to it, for sure. 
especially with, like relationships with our coaches. We were a lot tighter with our coaches than we've been in a long time. Um, and it drew a lot of kids out that have never even played football before. Before the season even started, they seen what we were doing all summer and there was, I've, I've never seen that many kids to a preseason practice in my life in heart. I think June, July, asked me what, if I wanted to help out and, and um, I always remember that colleague says, well, I'd like to see if we'll work out because you know how it goes in the football world and you might be a good fit or you might not, same with me, you know, vice versa. And I said, yup. And anyway, one thing started rolling and and I can remember coming here, I got it out, got out of work, came to school here and I pulled in and there was like 12 to 15 kids and I was like, holy smokes, that's, ins that's insane. We've never had that. Jennifer, you had five, six. Ran a half line. You know, that's what we did for years. Uh, I had people in the community calling me up, going, "Hey, what do you know about this guy? Is, is he is he good for us, or is this another coach that's coming here to collect a paycheck and he's going to be out in a couple years? He's looking for bigger and better things." And and I'll be honest, I right away I'm like, "This guy is the real deal. This is the guy we need." Um, don't much don't know much about him, but uh, I can tell you my interaction with him. This is the guy Hart needs. And all I wish is we would have had him in 2011 when I came here. The very things that are happening in our other sports were all of a sudden starting to happen in football. And that was something that had I haven't witnessed. Uh, whether I was coaching at Oak Ridge, watching up here, or in the previous nine years that I was here. But, uh, you know, it's happening now and watching it last year you knew you were watching something change and, and it was going to be good and I, I just kept thinking to myself okay hey i'm not going to make the same mistake that i watched another place make we started to see some teams that were expecting us to roll over at times and our kids didn't and our kids showed up and they continued to hit and hit and hit and play till the fourth quarter was over. So um, I think a lot of those things kind of came together, um, you know, and I think obviously our mindset played a role into it too. I, I think the kids thought we were different. And gotcha. I think the kids thought it was going to be different, so they acted different. Community, small community. Small community is, is uh, it's a special thing, I think, in this football program. It's it's uh where it's at right now. Where I hope it's going is something that I don't want to see stop anytime soon. Because I've waited a lot of years to get to where we where we're headed. Since Coach Tannis's arrival before the 2021 season, the Hart Pirates have had their first winning season since 1997 at six and three. Although they have yet to qualify for the playoffs, the community of Hart knows they've found their guy and they will continue their climb towards the elusive playoff berth and dominance of the West Michigan Conference. Hart is on the rise. Five, two, three, four, two, one, one, two, 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 one, two